today we have a very very serious topic because simply if you have scheduled a travel or you are scheduling a travel soon in Ukraine I will warn you to postpone this travel and to wait at least March we are now mid-January and the reason is very simple the level of risk right now of an attack and invasion by the Russian Federation is the highest I ever seen last six years since the Maiden Revolution since the war of 2014 and you need to remember that I started to go to Ukraine in 2009 I was a witness of what happened in 2014 at this moment I was married and I was monitoring on a daily basis what was going on the topic of the video is to explain you, tell you if you are in Ukraine if you are trapped, if something bad happened what for your safety you could do it's uh, intense because you never know during a war you you could fall for a lost bullet the first safety measure is to have your passport any time on you that's very important in 2014 I was uh, with my ex-wife in Kharkov we were visiting some friends of mine and at the moment she opened her bag and uh, I asked her but I don't see your passport, where is it? and she told me I let it in the flat I was very angry because Arkov is uh, located uh, 15 kilometers away from the border, Russian border and in half hour, one hour they could uh, start to size the city and at this moment the only option you have is to jump in a taxi and try to get out from the city before they are controlling any key points and you need to do this very fast so it's not time to come back to your apartment to get your belongings and so on I think uh, every minute, every second counts you also have to check very regularly uh, news and maybe to choose one or two press agency that can send you some special notification and you check this very very quickly what should warn you is what we call in Russian the Maskilovska um, Maskilovska is simply a, a provocation so uh, it's named in Russian provokatsya and simply they need a pretext to start this invasion so you say but why they need a pretext if they want to make an invasion they do the invasion and the result they have invaded so why we need a pretext you need to understand that is very important it's like an administrative pretext they have in their history a reason they can write in the history and they can have an official version this is very important if there is I would say a, a, a guard frontier attacked any important incident the second thing very important and maybe you already have enough cash on you in euro or dollars but you have to have cash on you you shouldn't be only with your credit card it's not enough reliable in such time one thing is sure if you don't have any cash on you, Grivna or Euro or Dollars, you damn not need to rush on an ATM because with the panic, those ATM will be empty in probably a few hours or a few days. And you damn not don't know when they will be uh, replenished. Also, a lot of people among the Ukrainian population will rush in the currency offices where you can exchange currencies because they will try to get back a maximum of dollars and euro why? because in such time of crisis many will believe that in the future the grivna will worth nothing for many reasons, devaluation, maybe the money will be exchanged so they will be stacked with this money and also because traditionally and economically in the history of Ukraine 
they have no trust in the banking system. They have no trust in the money, in the institution. So do you imagine during a uh, world time with such crisis, a lot of people will try to make some foreign currency and to keep it because this will be like a saving and it can protect their house. So everyone will rush in such offices to retrieve as much as possible as they can dollars or euro. And so you will improve your chance considerably to leave the country by having such cash. And I will consider to have enough grivna and also enough dollars or euro. Now you have two big options for the future. The first one is to stay in the country and to make yourself safe as much as possible. In my opinion, you have to take a flat, an apartment very close to your embassy. So it means that you have to reach Kiev or you are already in Kiev. And for example, the US embassy is on the western part of Kiev. The French one is uh, almost in the city center. And at this moment, you have to inform your embassy that you are a citizen of the country your first name, family name, so on, uh, your address, phone contact. And now they are informed that they have someone close to them and they can monitor what will happen to you. And they can also inform your relatives because they can be the go-between. Later, maybe they will have a plan for an exfiltration and you will be part of the people who will be exfiltrated officially, but you damn don't know when it will happen and if it will happen really. That is the first option. The second option is simply to leave the country. And to leave the country, it's divided in two. It depends entirely on the fact that you are on the eastern side of the Dnip River. The, the Dnip River is uh, crossing Ukraine uh, from north to, to the south, uh, to the sea. And, or you are located on the western part. And that's damn not important because this river is so large that you're not gonna to swim and to pass, especially during winter time. This river is very important because of course, Russian Federation will try to control all bridges. It's not a rocket science to guess that they will control it first to keep the possibility to pass through the Nyep and to invade the western part and also to avoid any uh, military counter-attack from Ukraine. Or they can do this with parachutists, they can do this of course with aeromobile force or with helicopters, or they can destroy some bridge with missile. So now you start to understand that if you are on the eastern bank of the Nyep, hmm, that starts bad for you. All those cities are concerned, Kharkov, Sumy, Poltava, the eastern part of Dnipro, because Dnipro is cut in two parts, Mariupol, but it's, it's unlikely that you, you are making some tourism in, in Mariupol. If you need to flee, if you are in those cities, it's, I would not advise you, of course, to go to the airport and to take a plane because the last place where you want to put your ass is a plane in this part of Ukraine at this moment because a lot of air-to-air, -air, sol air missile are gonna to fly all in the sky and you don't want to be in a civilian plane, even if it's a civilian plane. You don't want this. The airport and train station are uh, key points, key facilities that will be controlled, used, or destroyed by the Russian Federation Army, 100%. So it's not a good idea to rush to the airport. Now, if you are in the western part, and we will discuss about this later, you know that the invasion is imminent, but have not yet started. But you know that's really imminent. If you decide to take a plane, in Kyiv and especially in Lvov because I think that's the best option. You need to book your plane quickly as possible. Okay, if you have a plane in two hours, you buy the ticket, you go to the airport right now and you jump in the plane. 
the most important is not where you go. For example, if you live in Dallas and you will try to find a, a flight to Dallas. So no, that will be a mistake. You first need to exfiltrate yourself from Ukraine. It's in Czechia, it's in Poland, it's in France, a direct flight to, to Paris. Likely it will be in Germany. A lot of flights are landing in Germany or Amsterdam. This is the right plane you have to get. The fastest way you have to board the plane. You want a plane that leaves Ukraine, you land in Germany and after you will have time to take another plane and now you are safe. So if you take a plane, don't choose where you live. <laughs> choose the first plane that leaves Ukraine. But as the war has begun, I'm not sure I would like to go in an airport, even if it's on the western part of the Nip River. So all the other cities like uh, Kiev, Vinica, Lviv, Lvov. So the best solution that gives you the more chances is simply to join the border and I would hang the Polish border using a car, the taxi. And now you understand why you need to have some euro or to have some dollars because of course you want to pay this guy in dollar or in euro and you would like this too. And you need to offer him a big amount of money. So we don't speak about the usual price, something like $200, because now you need to make a big move and maybe you need to propose to this man, I don't know, six or seven or $1,000 to just leave. Maybe he will ask you more and there is no price because it's worth time. And what you want is just to leave and maybe I would be happy myself to drop 1,000 euro to this guy if he can get me close to the border as much as possible. Because of course, what you have to expect in the border, it's likely that thousand, 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 or maybe hundreds of thousand people will be there in the next days and they will wait to cross the border. So what will happen in my opinion, any citizen from Europe, USA, Australia, English with their passport will be allow it to cross the border. Polish authorities will allow this, but they will not allow the Ukrainian citizen to cross in because this will be like a big immigration wave and Europe don't want such a thing and surely not Poland. You will have to approach the border and it will be a big mess, 100%, but if you have your foreign passport, you are likely uh, in the hand to cross the border. It will take hours, it will take maybe one day or two days, but you will be able to do such a thing. I don't think that Russian Federation is gonna to shout thousands, thousands of people. That's not their interest. And this is at this point, a lot of people will concentrate it. And those people don't represent any threat and they are likely to be inside a lot of foreigners. I think that politically, uh, Russian Federation will not target those people. If you are using any means to leave the country by likely the Polish frontier, you have to remind those little and simple rules. Keep your phone, the battery full as much as possible. Keep this with you in your pocket because it's very light, it's almost nothing. A lot of uh, car in Ukraine, they have some USB socket, so you can plug your and, and charge your phone anytime. When you make a stop, try to eat, try to drink. When you stop with, with a taxi, with your driver, to rush to buy some clothes, you can find everywhere in Ukraine a lot of clothes, very cheap, and this is also why you need to have this cash because now you probably would like to have some warm clothes and also to change your shoes because at any time you damn not don't know what could happen. The car can break, or uh, maybe there is a barrage, uh, maybe the, the road are cut, maybe you don't know. Maybe at any time you will be on foot 
And now, of course, if you don't have the specific equipment for the winter time, you will suffer a lot. You think that I'm very pessimistic, but in such an environment, you damn not don't know what could happen. You really need to, <laughs> to think about the worst to guarantee as much as possible your chance because, yeah, it could be wide very, very quick. Now I would like to talk about the cities that they are going to size because they already tried to size those cities in 2014. First uh, one is Kharkov, Kharkiv, a city very close to the Russian border, only 15 kilometers. And this city is the second in population in Ukraine and there is a big plant, military plant here, producing tanks. The second city that they would like to aim for is Mariupol, so it's uh, only uh, 10 or 15 kilometers from the Donbass front, and there is a big port and a lot of uh, steel industry. So the Donbass was producing uh, a lot of coke, and that's the right combination for the industry. As they would like also to size Odessa because if they size Odessa, they could size easily the M16 road, which leads directly to a territory where they have a military base. And this territory is an informal country named Transnistria. And they have a damned problem because they have a lot of pro-Russian people here in Transnistria and they are compressed between Moldavia and the Ukrainian border. So sizing Odessa and having the M16 road, uh, they could uh, reunify this territory with uh, the Russian Federation. Therefore, if they size Odessa, I see no reason them to size the southwest portion along the coast, because Sizing this, they will reach the Romanian border and so they can treat uh, Romania at this moment. And there is another reason and the reason is there is an island. And around this island there is a lot of gas, a lot of resources that belong mainly to Ukraine. Yeah, there has been a, a struggle between Romania and Ukraine about uh, those resources and it's still going on. They have another problem that they could solve by sizing part of the Ukrainian territory. They have a supply water problem in Crimea and of course they will size a significant portion of the territory uh, along the coast. In my opinion this is what they at least aim for but nobody knows what will really happen. Only the president of the Russian Federation knows. Now the question is, for the price of the sanction, Russian Federation could consider that it is worth to size all Ukraine. And militarily speaking, this will be not really difficult because they are making some military exercise in Belarus. And therefore, when you are looking at the map, you understand that an invasion come full throat from all the north border and it's almost impossible to defend Ukraine because with the Belarus border plus the naval force that can land anytime in the south coast, Ukraine is almost uh, uncycled in a proportion of uh, 75%. They have possibility to invade everything. And this is why we can talk right now about the second solution if you try to escape. And this solution is to use the Romanian border on the north part of Romania. And be careful because there are a lot of mountains. So this could be your chance, of course. It's easier to escape through mountains. But now you will have to face a meteorological low condition, especially during winter time, and that's will be hard. But that could be an option. I would consider Romania border in its north path worth of a try 